QuickBooks Online 2023. Write checks for expenses and prepaid assets. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation with a 30-day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two things open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito mode or another browser. You can open the incognito mode if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser and the incognito mode, then searching in the search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive. We're going to be using the sample company to compare and contrast the accounting view, the view that Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the view that the sample company is in. You can toggle back and forth between the two views by selecting the cog up top and switch the view down below. Opening up a couple tabs to put reports in, right clicking on the tab up top to duplicate it like we do every time, right clicking to duplicate it again. I'm gonna do this one more time, opening up as well this time, the trial balance. I'm gonna duplicate another time, and then I'm gonna go way back to the middle tab now and open up the reports to open up the favorite balance sheet. If you're in the business view, by the way, the reports are in the business overview on the left and then the reports. That's where they are there. So then I'm going to go to the middle tab, go to the reports on the left hand side, open the other favorite, the profit and loss. Then I'm going to go to the tab to the right and do it one more time. Reports this time the trial balance. I want to practice using it. I'm going to close up the hand boogie right now and close up the trial or open up the trial balance by typing in trial balance and picking it up this is the report that has the balance sheet on top of the income statement i want to start practicing using it here when we're going to enter transactions that will have an impact to both statements changing the range from 010123 to 123123 running it to refresh it tab it to the middle do the same thing close the boogie scroll up to the top change the range the ranges they are changing from 010123 tab 1231 Two, three, tab, run it to refresh it one more time. Tab to the left, close the boogie, scroll up to the top, change the range, going to 010123, tab, 123 tab, run it to refresh it. That's the setup we do every time, except we kind of added the trial balance this time. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources, such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Now we're going to be entering some transactions, which are typically normal kind of month end type of transactions that you might expect on say the vendor cycle, the payment cycle, the expenses cycle that uh, that we're going to be entering into the system. So if I was to go to the float chart over here, we're considering the vendor cycle, which you can think about as the expenses cycle, where at the end of the day, we would expect money to be going out. The easiest way that you can pay people depends on the system you're using, but the easiest way would be simply to, to write a check or expense form for expenses as they come due, like telephone bill, uh, phone, you know, the, the utility bills and whatever bills and whatnot, the check form or an expense form for an elect if you paid them with an electronic transfer. Now, if you paid in this format, which many small businesses do, they just pay the bills as they come due, remembering that when I use the term bill, there's a difference between using it in terms of what you received in terms of a physical bill and uh, entering a bill form into the system, which is an increase to the accounts payable. If I received a physical bill, then I could just simply pay it with a check or expense form instead of entering a bill form into the system. So there's, a, there's that difference. So if I, if I was to do that, I could also just set up my bank feeds oftentimes to do that. So we'll talk about bank feeds in another course or section, but the easiest way would be basically if you have electronic transfers to wait for them to clear the bank and then record the transaction at that time 
which would be basically an expense form when you record it with the use of the bank feeds. Now, if you're gonna actually physically write a check for the, for the payments that you're making, the monthly bills and whatnot, then you're gonna wanna enter the check first and not just wait till it clears the bank because the whole point of the check is that you're gonna have this big gap between when you write it and when it actually clears the bank and you would like to be able to track whether or not you wrote the check and whether or not that check cleared if you have any confusions about that with the vendor that you're dealing with. So the other way we can enter it is with a bill. So if we got the physical bill, we can enter a bill into the system. The bill into the system increases the accounts payable and then you pay off the accounts payable with the pay bill, which is in essence a, a check type of form. Many small companies will basically be using electronic transfers on and therefore on a cash based system basically for the payments they're making and possibly on an accrual system in some cases for the revenue cycle because possibly they have to invoice people and that's just the way that their industry uh, is. As companies get larger, they're more likely to use the bills tracking the accounts payable so that they can delay the payment as late as possible because of the time value of money. In other words, if you had to pay like a $100 phone bill today or 15 days from now, it really wouldn't matter for most people if they paid it today instead of 15 days later. But if the bill was really large, if you're talking about large dollar amounts and or if you're talking about many, many transactions, then that 15 days becomes significant and the management strategies to try to pay as late as possible, take advantage of discounts and whatnot, if there's cash discounts offered becomes more and more uh, relevant. So for the first month, we're going to enter the bills just by using a check or expense form. And then in the second month, we'll enter the bills using uh, the bill payment method. So let's go back on over and just enter some of these bills. Now, these are also going to be things that are repetitive. So once we set up the vendor and the payment, hopefully the, the expense form account will populate automatically making it easier and easier for us to enter the second month than the first month the third month than the second month and so on and so forth if you have bank feeds turned on which we'll talk about in a future course or section then you'll be able to have uh, memorized transactions or rules to help to to make this a uh, more automated process after you do the first month of data input but you have to know how to set it up before you can do the automation and the accounting is what you need there. All right, so let's go back to the first tab. We're gonna start by entering one for uh, an insurance company we're gonna imagine. So I'm gonna hit the plus button. This one's actually a little bit more tricky. So we can use an expense form or check form. We're gonna imagine we're actually writing the check. So we're gonna use a check type of form. You can also enter this into the re a register format if you so choose, but I'm gonna use the form here. We're gonna call the company safe insurance now remember that as you're entering these transactions into the system if it was not the first time you're entering the transaction if you're starting a new job or something then you're going to want to make sure that you don't add new vendors with slightly different names you want to use what was done in the past and be consistent with it and if this fits so i'm going to set up a new vendor because we're starting you know we have a new company file we're setting up the vendors as we go Oftentimes the vendors will be just the name is all we need rather than all the contact information in order to just simply facilitate the payment. So I'm going to say, okay, I've got that in the required field. It's going to be coming out of the checking account. That would be the standard. It's going to be for that's good. The due date, let's say is the, is the 26th. We're going towards the end of the month here. Imagining this is happening towards the end of the month. The check number populating automatically. So that looks good. If we were to actually physically be, be writing the checks or then we might write hand write the checks and double check that the check number is accurate. If we're going to be doing the checks within uh, QuickBooks, then we might print them later here. We'd still have to buy the checks in order to print them, put the checks in the printer to print on them. We're not going to have any tags. We've got the category down below. Note, we're not entering an inventory item this time. We're just going to be assigning an account for the insurance company. Now, we started off with one that's a little bit confusing, that being the insurance. We might have different kinds of insurance, liability insurance, auto insurance, or whatever types of insurance. The thing about insurance is it's different than like a phone bill. With a phone bill, 
we we get the service first and then they charge us for the service that we that we used with insurance we're going to be paying for something that's going to happen into the future now if you're close to the point in time where the actual benefit is being received then then it's not a big deal and you can expense it kind of as you go for example obviously with the phone bill the 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 util the, the phone usage happened the month before but you're entering it pretty close to when you actually consumed it on an accrual method we would like to enter when we consumed it for the insurance we're not going to consume it until the month after but if we're paying on a month by month basis then we might still be be saying well that's pretty close so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna enter it as an expense however if you paid for like five years of insurance up front then it starts to distort your income statement right and this is the same concept as it's most clearly seen in like fixed assets if you bought a building for a hundred thousand dollars you paid a hundred thousand dollars cash for it and you expensed it in january for example on the income statement then january versus february when you try to compare your performance will be way skewed because january will look like you did really bad with this huge loss but really you bought a building that you're going to be using for 39 years or something like that so what we need to do then in that case is put it on the books as an asset and then allocate the expense over the time it's going to be consumed same concept for any other kind of prepayment if i was to buy a year's worth of insurance which we're going to speculate here then i might put it on if i just expense it then january and february will, will once again look skewed so to be fair i should put it on the books as an asset and then allocate it to the expense accounts as we consume the insurance as we get the coverage but uh that takes another step so with these prepayments and the insurance is the most clear example of a prepayment you want to talk to your accountant and say how are you going to set up the prepayment do you want to stay in a cash-based system or do you think that you need to do an uh, accrual kind of component to it either way you can kind of set up a, a system where every time you make a payment it'll go to the same account whether that account be a prepaid account or whether it be an expense account if it's a prepaid account then we have to do adjusting entries which we'll talk about uh, at a future presentation so we're going to set up a prepayment account here so we're going to look in our chart of accounts if we've never paid these people before and there's probably not a insurance prepayment in here so there probably is some kind of insurance expense but not an insurance prepayment so what i'm going to do is is type in and make a new account i'm going to call it prepaid notice they have prepaid expenses i could use that one but i'd rather use that like as a parent account maybe if i had multiple types of prepaid expenses so i'm going to make another account prepaid in insurance and then say tab it's going to ask me to set it up so i'm going to set it up it's going to be an expense account so we're we're no it's not going to be an expense we're going to do prepaid insurance is an other current asset other current asset that's the point and then i'm just going to say it's an other uh other current asset here we'll just say boom prepaid insurance i don't need a description it's not a sub account unless i want to put it under that prepaid account but i'm not going to do that and that's it so let's save it and then let's say the amount what it, we could put a description for the for the amount covered so we might say it's for a year uh and you might then put the dates the start and the stop which might help you later on to do adjusting entries or whoever's doing the adjusting entries i'm going to say it's twelve thousand dollars for a year's worth of coverage it's not going to be billable because i'm not going to be allocating it to uh, a customer uh, and making an invoice related to it i'm not going to add any lines i don't need any memo any attachment we can cancel clear we could print the check we can order checks we can make it reoccurring you have the more options of voiding and then we can save and close it or save and new we're going to go with the save and close and check it out as we go let's go to the balance sheet see what happens run the report to refresh it checking account if we go into that we should have a check in the checking and there's the check check it out there's a check Twelve thousand looks good opening that up and there's our check looks good closing this out scrolling up back to the balance sheet the other side did not go to the income statement for our first item here but rather 
went into prepaid insurance. Is that how you spell insurance? It looks right, yeah. 12,000, there it is. And now we're gonna imagine that's for a year, which breaks out to 1,000 a month. So when we do adjusting entries at the end of the period, we're gonna take 1,000 each month and take it, take the prepaid insurance down and record it to prepaid expense. So it's an added step, then a cash-based system but we'll end up with $1,000 a month being allocated to each month in accordance with, with when that expense was incurred on accrual concept as opposed to when it was paid for. So we'll talk more about that in the adjusting entries in a future course or section. Let's do another one. We're gonna go back to the first tab. We're gonna hit the plus button again and we'll go to another check. Checking out another check. Now we're gonna pay the, the, uh, the electric bill. So we're gonna say it's Edison. Edison, notice I'm gonna to have to set up all my vendors because this is kind of like the first month of data input as we go. If we were doing bank feeds, then oftentimes if they were electronic transfers, this will be in the memo somewhere, but you're still gonna to have to set, in, set them up as a vendor. Once they're set up, then it should be a lot easier going forward because it'll memorize the account category down below most likely. So we're gonna say tab, and then that looks good. We're gonna we're gonna copy over Edison to the uh, required field. It's gonna be coming out of the checking account. The date we'll keep it at the 26 2008. That's the check number automatically populating. I'm not gonna print the checks for the example problem. And then down here, now we've got our questions on which account do we want to put this to. I'm gonna open up another tab. I'm gonna right click on this tab, duplicate it. I'm gonna pull it to the left so that we can open up our chart of accounts, which are in, let's close this thing up because I have it open in another tab. And I'm gonna to go to the chart of accounts, accounting on the left-hand side, chart of accounts, and then close up the boogie. If you're in the business view, by the way, the chart of accounts is in the bookkeeping and then you've got your uh, your chart of accounts right here. Okay, so then in the chart of accounts, note that the expense categories down here, that's where you have the most variance between your capacity to have different account names and how you're gonna organize the chart of accounts. Do you wanna have a lot of sub ledgers? Do you wanna have more accounts, which adds more detail, but also makes things more compli complex? Or do you wanna have less accounts and make things simpler but not have as much detail. You can kind of have the best of both worlds in the reports by having uh, more accounts that are kind of sub accounts, these accounts that are that will expand. So th the idea here would be most people I would recommend use the, the format that QuickBooks has given you for the most part if there's an account that they have given that matches what you want to do, use that account if it's close but it's not formatted the way you want it, go in here and change the formatting of that account to the name that you want and whether it be a sub account or not. And if there's no account at all, only then do you add a new account uh, at that point in time is, is the general rule. Then after two months of data input, you can go in, in here and try to delete or make inactive all the accounts that basically you're not, you're not using and in that way you can kind of clean this whole thing up and the utilities is a good area because the utilities used to be like phone uh, electric and water and uh, the gas but many people break the phone out into its own thing now so a lot of times i wouldn't put the phones under the utilities at all anymore i would just have its own account for phone oftentimes and then i usually use utility personally as just that's where i put the electric not in its own account, but just in the utilities account. I consider like gas and electric usually utilities. That's how I typically do it. It might change depending on the cost of things. Obviously the phone has gone up in cost, but that's why most people think it's relevant to have its own line item on the, on the income statement. Okay, so if I go back on over here, I'm just gonna put this into the utilities account direct, directly. And I'm just gonna put it into, into that account and I'm not gonna use all these sub accounts uh, under the utilities is is going to be my idea and then the telephone i'm probably going to going to change the name and take it out of being a sub account when i get there 
Okay, so then you might want to put something on the description, like like the period that you paid for, but I'm not going to do it here. 620, it's not going to be a billable item. We're not going to have any tax on it or so on. This is going to decrease the checking account. The other side is going to go to the income statement this time. Let's do it and save it. Let's. I'm going to close this. Well, I'll keep that open. Let's go to this tab and run it and then check out the checking another there it is there's the other side it's going to edison this time to the utility movie b to the n and then we're going to go to the tab to the right and run it to refresh it and then now this side is now in the utilities under the expenses we've got our first expense account isn't that wonderful now you can check this out more easily just on the trial balance over here we've got a balance sheet side the cash and then the income statement side the expense on the same form see how much shorter and easier it is to have this open than an income statement and balance sheet if all you're trying to do is kind of verify which accounts were impacted by them so that might be a, a tool worth checking out speaking of checks let's make another one eh eh let's go to the tab the middle the middle tab here and then we're going to hit the plus button and we'll do another check this time we're going to pay verizon the phone company let's say so this is going to be i'm going to make a new vendor verizon just on the fly as we go i'm flying and we're making vendors in the air passing clouds and making vendors so that's going to be our required field verizon cash account boom boom looks good check number populating automatically and then down here i'm going to see what they have do they have a telephone expense telephone no they just call it phone they got phone and they call it phone services so so i would rather change that so now i'm going no nah. i'm going to go back to the tab to the left i don't want to make another one called telephone because then i might then i might record something to both of those i'm just going to take this account and call it telephone and i'm going to take it out of the utilities and all this other stuff if i'm not using it i'm just gonna i'm gonna make those inactive at some point or i would imagine to do that at some point in the future so i'm gonna say i'm gonna use this account but i'm gonna change it we're gonna edit it and i'm gonna say i just want to call it i just want to call it not a sub account not a sub account i just want to make it a, a normal expense account in the expense category so they, they kind of changed the way to do that in here. So I just click the expense category, which is which is not a sub account now. And then and then I'm not gonna have anything. I'm just gonna call it telephone. Telephone. That's what I want to call it. So we'll save it. So now it should be updated. They're requiring me to have a field here. So let's say we do we'll go with utilities on that one. Okay, so then that looks good. So let's save it and close it. So we should be good to, to roll. It should be down there in telephone and not as a sub account. Uh, we'll see it when we get over here. There it is, right there. It's right there. Can't you see? Are you blind? No, I just didn't see it, okay? There was a lot of accounts at the same time. Okay, then again, you might wanna put like a description here, but we're not gonna now, and I'm gonna say this was for 410. We're gonna say 410 save it and close it same stuff's gonna happen balance sheet run it to refresh it checking accounts got a new check in it a new check we're gonna check out in the checking there it is the 410 scrolling back up back on over the other side's on the income statement the p to the l the profit to the loss boom there it is and on the trial balance we could have just looked at this one report where it has these two expense accounts on down below Okay, let's do another one here. This one I'm going to say supplies. So I'm going to go back uh, to, to, to the middle tab and we're going to say new again, another check, check out another one. Let's check out another one. And this one I'm going to say is, is going to be supplies. So I'm going to say supplies or we're going to get the supplies from Staples. We'll say this is going to be from Staples tab and so that looks good i'm going to copy that on over here boom and then i'm going to save it so we have our new vendor check numbers being populated now now supplies down here is is we could have the same kind of issue that we had with 
the with the insurance meaning if i'm buying supplies and i'm buying buying a bunch of supplies kind of like it would be kind of similar to inventory if i bought a whole lot of supplies and i'm going to be using them for like years into the future and they're significant in dollar amount then i might put them into a supplies account similar to inventory and as i use them i might have to track them at least most likely in a periodic inventory system counting the inventory and that would be something like medical supplies for example but if the supplies are small in nature are uh, and not material in cost then the easiest thing to do would be just to expense them so that's what we're going to do here we're just going to expense the supplies so there's probably an account for supplies so i'm going to type in supplies and see what we have here they got an expense account for supplies they office they also have an, an office supplies sub account so it's funny that it's quite redundant on it so i should probably pick one of these and like delete the other one i'm just going to keep it in supplies and not have it as sub account i think that would be the preferable option for me and then we're going to put the amount on for 500 500 and then so there we go so there that's it so that's going to do the same i'm going to save it and close it and then i'm going to go to my balance sheet and run it running and then check out the checking and we should have then another check down here for the 500 on the supplies scrolling back up to the top back to the reports i'm going to go then to the profit and loss and run it and then we've got our supplies here that looks good tab it to the right if i look at the trusty trial balance i can run that again and then there's our expense accounts at the bottom of it because it's the balance sheet on top of the income statement now i do think i need to make a little bit of a change here uh, because i think i got my check numbers mixed up a little bit out of order so i'm going to go in here and just show us how we can make an, a change to the accounts because i enter these in a different order and i want the check numbers to match up to our our uh bank account when we do the bank feed uh category so Hopefully this doesn't throw us too far off here. I'm going to go into Edison and I'm going to try to change the number here, just the number to 1009, because that's going to match what's on our bank statement. And then I'm going to say, okay. And then wait a sec, do you want to leave without saving? No, I want to save it. Let's save it and close it. And then it says, I already have this check number. That's okay, because I'm going to change the next one as well. So now I've got two that are the 1009 and then the verizon down here needs to be uh 1010 so i'm going to save and close that one yes and so there's that one now i've got two of those and the staples needs to be 1008 1008 so sorry about that confusion if you don't do that it, it'll still be okay but we won't have the, the check numbers won't line up when we do the bank rec so I think we're good now. So let's go back up top. I'm going to go back. And so there, there is that. Now, uh, we usually don't need to track like a lot of this, a, a lot of the expense accounts by vendor bec because we're not going through the accounts payable. But if we needed to get more information about who we paid, we can obviously drill down on the accounts here. We could go into the check-in account and drill down on the check-in account there to look at the payments. We could sort by payment. And we can go to the, let's go to the first tab, open up the hand boogie, and then scroll down to the expenses area. And we could go into the vendors here and into the vendors. Here are the people that we paid. Now, even if you use the bank feeds, you want to make sure, cause it might be possible to enter transactions into the bank feed, adding the necessary information, the account without adding the vendor. But if you don't add a vendor, then you can't go in here and like search for this information by vendor and see who you paid you know by vendor so there's the actual check and you don't really necessarily need that information because you can create the financial statements without it but you might as well have that added data field so that you have another field to search in if you have any kind of issues that you want to go into you always want to add the vendors and the customers if you can and usually they're in the bank feed memo so, so we'll talk th about that more when we get to that. Now, obviously the more difficult thing to do with vendors is to deal with the bills if you're entering the bills and having an accounts payable, but we're on a cash based system. If we're just entering checks, 
We'll talk more about bills in the second month of data input. You can also look for the checks in the expenses area by filtering by transaction type by a check form, for example, and then apply that out. And so there are uh, the checks that we have put in place. If you wanna look at the other view here where those things are located in the business view, you've got the get pay and pay area where you've got the, uh, the pay area, the vendors. So there's your vendors. And then you've got your bookkeeping area and the transactions and the expenses. That's where you can kind of sort and find those checks by, uh, by checks, the checks alone. Okay, so that's it. Let's go back to the trial balance. Let's refresh it, run it to make sure it's fresh. Check our numbers. If, if your numbers tie up to our numbers, great. If not, try expanding the date range. It's often a date issue. If there's a change when you expand the range, drill down on it, possibly change the date to match uh, the date range here, which is something to do great in practice, but be careful in practice. It's great for a practice problem, but be careful in practice. We'll also take a look at a transaction detail report at the end of a month of data input which is helpful to further drill down on any differences.